Okay, and welcome back to the bed. So what you see before you is something that I'm sure needs no introduction. The BSR record changer, which is in need of some TLC. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So I'm going to be doing quite a few things to this. I'm going to be giving this a complete mechanical overhaul. I'm also going to be changing the cartridge in there to one of those flip needle cartridges. I'm also going to be making an impedance matching circuit so I can connect the ceramic cartridge up to a line level input without everything getting all tinny and shrill. And also going to be doing some cosmetic restoration. I mean, I have no idea what, the, what that stuff all is, but I do have a little bit of a confession to make. I've already done a little bit of mechanical work on this prior to making this video. Because, beforehand, this thing would just pretty much ground to a crawl every time I would try the change cycle. If we try that now... It's still slowing down quite a bit, but it's a lot better than it was. In fact, this is what it was like before I did anything. So stiff that's gotten... It has no right to be running that slowly. So, yeah. It's not at its best. So, let's just unplug. What I've done so far, if I can just get that off, is I've cleaned and lubed the turntable spindle, which freed up the turntable. Also, this gear here, this cam gear with the catch and everything, completely cleaned this out so I completely cleaned out this track on this gear here because the oil in there had pretty much turned into glue oh this little um, thing here uh, what do you want to call that and also cleaned and oiled that spindle there so that now works as you saw just a couple of minutes ago also this catch on this gear is not supposed to be oiled and that had some oil on it, so cleaned all that out. Let's just put that back on there if I can get that to go in. I'll clip that in properly later. And don't you even think about it. Now I just want to clear up one little thing here. I'm sure some of you are asking, why don't I just ditch the ceramic cartridge and go with a magnetic cartridge? Well, here's the thing. I tried a magnetic cartridge in this turntable quite a few years ago. In fact, it was this cartridge right here. I wired it up properly, got a suitable preamp and everything, but it didn't take long before it became apparent that this turntable was never designed to be used with a magnetic cartridge. Because... With the motor running, it induced a lot of hum into the cartridge through which some faint music could be heard. And I did everything I could to shield the cartridge from the hum created by the motor, but to no avail. So that's why I bought a brand new flip needle cartridge. Also, that's going to be a little bit more authentic. So with that all out the way, I've now got the horrors of all this to deal with. So I'm going to be taking this apart piece by piece cleaning all those parts, relubing them, and hopefully putting it all back together. Oh yeah, try not to freak out about the bad wiring here, that's going to be dealt with too. I think a good starting point here would be to number these parts layer by layer, so I know which order they go back together in. So, this big metal piece here will be labelled with a 1, and then the bits above that will be labelled a 2, and then bits above that will be labelled a 3 and so on so I know pretty much whether it should go under or over when I'm putting the thing back together also I've got to be very careful when I undo these little clips here holding things together because if I lose those well that's going to make things very very difficult that's annoying when every pen you try has run out of ink well I've got a whole bunch of parts here to clean Including a little bit I missed when I was cleaning the spindle, so yeah, don't know how I missed that, but 
this doesn't include all the stuff that's on the other side of the turntable, because I still have all of this to get off and clean up all in there. I mean, just look at the state of that if I could get the camera focused on it. Okay, we have a naked record player. I've stripped this down as far as I'm willing to go. And just look at all the dust in there. That's going to have to be cleaned out. And all this is going to be cleaned, relubed. Well, this is looking a lot better now. Well, this is looking a lot better now. I've gone and cleaned all the plastic parts. It's about as good as I can get them. I've also cleaned out the back as best as I can, degreased it and everything. So, I think it's time to reassemble this from the front. Well, you know something? I decided that cleaning all those parts was just going to be too challenging. So, I went and ordered a bunch of new parts and here they are. Actually, no. These are those same parts you saw before, but now, clean and shiny. Question is, can I put them all back in? I have absolutely no idea. Although I labelled all these parts, I completely forgot that when I cleaned them, it's going to wipe that label off. But fortunately, I anticipated that, and I've taken a whole bunch of pictures of this in various states of disassembly, so I'll have an idea of where each part goes. You know, I think reassembling this thing isn't going to be as difficult as I originally thought. It's just kind of like a 3D jigsaw puzzle, really. You just gotta find which bits fit where. Like this part here, which will eventually connect to the tone arm. Now, I thought that went in like that, but if that goes in like that, well, that's filling this little pin here, which is part of the tone arm lifter mechanism, which was an absolute bugger to reassemble. This took me several tries, but I finally got it right. Don't know if you can see that all that well from this angle. So I just inserted this, moved it around a bit until it seemed to fit, which seems to fit right there. And this little part here, which um, it's just it goes on like that, and that should just slot in there. Well, it did last time. I was trying to screw it into the wrong holes. And there it is, put back together. Well, this part put back together anyway. Even making sure to reconnect the anti-skating spring, because that's going to be pretty difficult to connect when everything else is in place. Okay, bet you didn't think I'd be able to get it back together again. I'll admit, without those pictures that I took, I would have had no idea where some of the parts went. Question is, does it still work? And the answer to that is, oh yes it does. But we run into a few bugs. Um, let me just run this through a change cycle. I don't have it connected to power right now, so I just have to turn it manually. You can see the arms going across like it should do, but when it drops... Might be able to see that it drifted back just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and stiffen up this tone arm a little bit. Stiff enough so it doesn't flop about when it's being raised and lowered, but not too stiff that it cannot track the grooves. Right, so I've made a little modification here to the bearing where the tone arm is. And all I've done is I've just simply stuck three layers of toilet paper there. I know it's a very crude solution, but it should work. And also, I've put a flexible plastic washer on this screw here. So, the tighter I turn this screw, the stiffer the tone arm will get. And the looser I have this screw, the uh, more free the tone arm will be. Another little thing I've done is, I don't know if I showed it, but the 78 RPM speed was very noisy. It made a terrible racket as it was going around. It's because there was some crud on the motor spindle, so I cleaned that off with a little bit of sandpaper. Also did the two other speeds as well. So the very next thing to do is to align this thing. 
We need to find where it's going to put the needle down. So, I'll just go through a change cycle with this part up. Okay, it's coming across. I still went back a little bit though, so uh, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to do that. So, as you can see, it's putting the needle down just a little too far over to the right, so yeah. We need to adjust that. If I lift the thing out of the way, you might be able to see there's a little screw right here. And that can be used to adjust where the tone arm rests. So I'm just going to move that over just a little bit. You can see the tone arm move a little bit when I turn the screw there. Okay, so we'll try that again. I don't think it was completely all the way through the change cycle there. But it doesn't really matter. Let's see what it's putting the tone arm down now. We're getting closer. Still not quite there, but you get the general idea. So I'm just going to faff around with that, get that done, and I'll be back. Right, okay, well, I have the motor connected with this rather dodgy connection, but this is just uh, just for testing purposes. We're going to see if the change cycle works. Let me make sure this is on the 7-inch setting, yep. Now, I don't have the audio connected at the moment, because I'm going to be replacing that needle anyway. Right, so, going through a change cycle. Yep, let's drop the record. Putting the tone arm on. And look at that. Okay, I'm going to move it all the way to the end. Should drop the next record. There we go. Turn on, come back. Oh, yeah. Might even be able to hear the needle talk there if I take my microphone off and put it right next to the. Better not play that. You know what YouTube's copyright police are like. They'll probably pick up on that. So, I'm just trying to get this microphone back on. Excuse me a minute. There we go. My homemade headset microphone. Right, let's go through another change cycle. Perfect. I am starving me. Oops. Let's move that right to the end. Another record? I think we have a winner! Right, let's get that to the end. And it should put itself off. There we go. Alright, so let's try this with a 33. Right, here we are with a 12 inch. So, put that onto 12 inch. Don't really need to adjust the speed since I'm not playing anything, but I'll do that anyway. Just to be a little easier on the record. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. I definitely better not play anything from this record because that will get me done for copyright, so yeah. It's a good thing I don't have the audio connected at the moment. His master's voice. And now we're going to try and play a 78. There's no way I'm putting that on the top of the spindle and having it drop down, so... I'm doing it this way. So, set this to 10 inch. Set the speed to 78. Let's see what happens. Here it comes. Oh yeah. Absolutely perfect. 
And you know what? Just realised this record has no lead-in groove, so I'm just going to have to push it over a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, that's just about it. I think we have a winner here. So join me next time in Cool Do Clem's Electronic Workshop, where I'll be going over the electricals, building a impedance matching circuit for the ceramic pickup. And anyway, that's about all I have time. So until next time, goodbye. Yeah, time that just right.